A 35-year-old man with a lipo 3 fracture complains of blood tinged watery discharge from his nose two days after the trauma. CT scan confirms NOE fracture, that means nasoorthopedic with moidal fracture, which investigation is most confirmatory for detecting CSF leak. The options over here are CT scan, MRI scan, presence of glucose in the fluid, and presence of transferrin beta. So let's eliminate the options and let's see how can we arrive at an at an answer. So, from the question and from the options, it has been clarified to us that there is a fracture that the patient is having, and the fracture is a high fracture. So, it's a lipo 3 fracture, that means there is disjunction, craniofacial disjunction. So, CSF leakage is going to be present in this patient as it is one of the most common signs in patients with both lipo 3 as well as lipo 2 fractures. So, a CT scan. What is a CT scan? A CT scan is a part of, is a type of an X-ray modality that is used, imaging modality that is used for detection of heart tissue abnormalities. So, in such cases, a CT scan is going to be of no use because we will be able to detect a fracture. However, we won't be able to identify what, if there is a CSF leak or not with the use of a CT scan. Now, coming to the next option you have MRI scan. So, MRI scan is used is an imaging modality used for soft tissues. However, it does not identify whether there is a leakage from the CSF or not because this is a more clinical sign. It could be used to identify any uh, blockage or if there is any uh, accumulation of fluid or inflammatory fluid in a particular area. However, it would not be able to detect the leakage. For example, if there is a retention cyst, mucosal, or for example, or uh, if there is any uh, arterial aneurysm that is present, or if there is any hernial herniation of fluid into the pleural cavities, those can be easily detected with the help of MRI. However, if there is any open pneumothorax, or if there is a fluid pipe passing from one area to the other, that would not be able to de be detected through the help of an MRI scan. Coming to the last two options, these are confusing and we need to use, uh, we'd rather go through the explanation in order to identify what is the most useful modality. Now, when it comes to CSF leakage, we need to remember four things and these are four signs that have been asked repeatedly. One, this is called as the halo effect. So, in such cases, what happens is when the patient is uh, sleeping or if there is any leakage from the nose where there is blood as well as CSF leakage, what happens is the blood clots in the center whereas the CSF spreads a little more. So, if I drop a drop of, if I, if I, you know, if there is a drop of water that has fallen on the floor. So, initially there will be a center, it touches the center and then it starts spreading evenly. That is the same thing that happens in the halo effect. So, the blood initially clots and that forms the area over here. The CSF does not have any clotting components in it and that is why it spreads a little more away and it is able to wet a larger surface area. This is what is called as the halo effect. The second one is the tram like pattern where when you have a leakage seen through the nose or when the patient is sleeping on the pillow, you will see A pattern like this where it just keeps on growing and farther away from each other. Initially the convolutions are like this, second they become a little more farther away from each other, third they go farther away and finally there is even more distance between the convolutions. So this is what is called as a tram like pattern which is seen on the pillow of the patient. The third one over here is the reservoir sign. It is very simple, what you do in this is you ask the patient first to look straight and then you ask the patient to tilt his head downwards. On doing so, you will see leakage of the CSF that comes out through the nose and this is a, this is what is called as the reservoir sign. And the last one is the handkerchief test. Over here what happens is you make the patient blow his nose on, onto a handkerchief. If it is inflammatory in nation, nature or if the patient is having some bacterial infection because of which uh, there is some discharge from the nose, ideally the handkerchief should stiffen after some time because the mucus that is secreted stiffens. However, in, 
if the leakage is csf in nature then the handkerchief will not step in it will remain as wet and crumpled as it was when the patient had blown his nose so now let's see over here laboratory tests for csf detection include the presence of glucose oxidase csf glucose levels greater than 30 mg per deciliter protein content le less than 2 g per deciliter per liter sorry and the detection of beta 2 transferrin High chloride and low glucose concentrations in the fluid compart compared with serum indicate the presence of CSF. That means CSF has a higher glucose level. However, it has lower protein as well as chloride. However, the use of glucose indicator sticks is associated with a high, high incidence of false positive results. Why is this so? Because the glucose indicator strips which contains glucose oxidase is a very highly sensitive uh, stick. So, even if it detects very small amount of glucose, it will turn positive and that is the reason why this has this cannot be used. On the other end, the presence of transferrin 2 beta, beta 2 transferrin is what will be useful for the patient and it will help in detection of uh, CSF leakage through the nose.